Hello, welcome to another video. Today's video is a tag. It's a challenge. I was challenged by Beauty Barometer. Thank you. And I'm not the only one. I'll be linking everyone's channel in the description. All the other YouTubers doing just the same video. We're talking about 10 fragrances that we simply adore from our collection. Uh, top 10. Top 10 fragrances in our collection. And mine will be top 10 niche. Uh, I also have to mention that their channels, most likely all of them, are in Romanian. So if you happen to speak and understand this language, go visit them, show them some love, would be really nice of you. So let's see my top 10. Picking just 10, just 10 favorites, feels like you're abandoning the rest. It really feels that way. And I know I'm not, I'm, it's not like I'm throwing away the rest, but it kind of felt that way and I wanted to put more. But hey, only 10 spots. Okay. So number 10 is number 10 because it's not so versatile. Although I do adore it. And of course I adore each and every scent in this top because, you know, only 10 out of many. So number 10 is with bouquet. Well, this one, like I was saying, because it's not so versatile, because you cannot wear it whenever, whatever, you need to find occasions for this one. At least this is how I feel about it. Maybe you're different, maybe you wear this each and every day, maybe this is your uh, signature scent. But me, I need to find occasions. Uh, weather needs to be colder. I don't know, I just don't see myself spraying this in the summer, although I love it. So, this is number 10 for that reason. This combination of rose, wood, and pralines, but not a lot of wood. So don't, don't be intimidated by wood, because I know many, many people are. This is sticky and, and thick and heavy. It's really syrupy and sweet. So if you're a lover of gourmands, this is something that you must try. I think each and every scent, besides one in this top, are super long-lasting. They're like Pretty much, I mean, not all of them are beasts, I wouldn't quite use that word, but most of them are great when it comes to how long-lasting they are. Um, so, number nine is from Jo Malone. Oh no, Jo Malone is not long-lasting. Well, this one is, at least on me, Myrrh and Tonka from Jo Malone. Black bottles are usually better when it comes to performance. And this one, mm, this one, doesn't you don't need an, an occasion for this one this is the nice part so this one you can wear almost whenever wherever but it still needs colder weather um but it can be like a day-to-day -day scent because it's inoffensive enough yet special enough because i'm not just looking for inoffensive in terms of like you know nobody knows notices it uh it it doesn't like produce any reaction this is nice. This works great, great on a guy. And with Jo Malone fragrances, the name is what's in the bottle. I like this about their scents. This is Myrrh and Tonka. Yeah, this has lavender, but just like so little. I don't get a lot of lavender from it. This has vanilla. Yeah, this, this has a lot of vanilla, actually. And this is delicious. It has, I don't know, it has like a little bit of a medicinal vibe, but in a good way. I really like this about the scent. And it's definitely, definitely my favorite from Jo Malone. Number eight is my favorite tobacco scent. I have another one that I really, really like that I wanted to put in this top, but th there was not enough, not enough room for it. So this one is, did you guess? No, it's not side effect. Yeah, that's the one I was talking about. It's Herod. Harrod had to be here. This is Christmas in a bottle for me. This is, oh, this is so good. This is the best tobacco, in my opinion, as much as I smelled. Yes, tobacco from Frank Bocle is also really, really nice. But this one is slightly more creamy. That one has more clove in it. So I did pick this one from Perfumes de Marly. I feel like this one 
is cozy, it's a little bit sexy, asks for colder weather. Again, yeah, I, I kind of like go toward the, towards these like colder weather uh, fragrances. I find them really beautiful, really like rich, um, but I do like my freshes and you'll see. There are some freshes in here, you'll see later. This is gorgeous if you love tobacco. And if you love like these type of like spicy, a little bit sweet, a uh, little bit like this has pepper, this has uh, cloves, I think, uh, this has cinnamon, it has vanilla, obviously tobacco. This is like so beautiful, you must try this. If you like the ingredients as presented in the description, you need to try it because this is very, very like wearable, this is very uh, creamy, this is really, you know, likable, that type of scent. So yeah. Number eight is Herod. Number seven comes from the house of Vinicio. And it's something that I spoke about a few times, I think. It was in some tops. I consider it so sexy and mysterious and dark. Wood for greatness, of course. This does have the Baccarat Rouge vibes. It does. And as I said once, I think this is the Baccarat Rouge for men. One of them, because there are more options of, of this kind. Um, this, although, yeah, it has wood in it. But again, if with wood bouquet, the wood is not really there. I mean, it is, but that's not the, the most prominent note. This wood is quite clean. For wood, of course. This is not the skanky animalic wood that you might be like, mm, can I wear that? Yes, you can definitely wear this one. This is super wearable. That's the beauty of it. Uh, it's quite addictive. Like, when I spray this on my arm, I, I keep sniffing it. It has something in it that makes me sniff it on and on. And um, both men and women can obviously wear it. Maybe it leans masculine. I think it leans masculine for sure but I do like it. So I'm not one to necessarily hunt for feminine fragrances. I like my unisex fragrances a lot. So this to me is a saffron bomb. This is how I would describe it. Like the best way of putting it is a saffron bomb. So it's quite spicy. It's quite dry. It has like just a tinge of sweetness just to make things interesting, but this is not sweet. If Baccarat Rouge is sweet, indeed, this is not sweet. Um, and it's addictive. It has something. And even the trail. The trail is so addictive. It's so nice. So, so sexy even. Um, yeah. Uh, I really like this one. So obviously, it's in this top. This top was screaming for a freshie, for a summer scent, for something to wear now when spring and summer are coming. And I picked as my first freshie, because there will be others, Orange Sanguine from Atelier Cologne. And this is actually the 30 ml bottle and it's so cute. It comes with this case protection. You can travel with it. It's really nice. This is actually leather. Um, yeah, so this, this did beat for me and not only for me, also for Luminita, did beat um, light blue from Dolce & Gabbana. I still like that one, but this is better. This is so realistic. This is, I think, what I like most about it is the fact that it smells like the actual orange. It smells realistic. Most of the time when you get um, a, a scent that has to um, copy, let's say copy, it's not a good word, but you know what I mean, has to smell like something that you can smell in real, like citruses, uh, a fruit, um, tea, you name it. A lot of times they don't get it right. Like you smell it and you're like, yeah, but it smells synthetic. It's not there. This does not smell synthetic. This smells exactly like what it says it is. This is orange. This is like the, the peel, the inside of the orange, everything. Everything about the orange is in here. It's quite sweet. It's quite sparkly. It's so uplifting. Like it's one of those scents that just put a smile on your, on your face. And in this top, I have a bunch of those because I do enjoy wearing those. What can I say? I like my dark scents, which like give me a certain mood as well. But these, these tend to just make me smile, make me happy, um, make my day better. And, and I like that. Uh, this one is the exception I was talking about. This is not so long lasting, obviously, because it's a freshie and most freshies are that way. And I'm okay with it. I accepted it. It's fine. And I will 
keep this in my collection for a very long time. Hopefully they don't discontinue or something. I'll probably need a bigger bottle at some point because this will, I'm pretty sure I'll finish this in no time. So yes, Atelier Colon Orange Sanguine. We got to number five, the middle of this top. And we have, from Frédéric Mal, we have Musk Ravageur. Musk Ravageur, yes, that's, that's how you say it. Is it? Um, this one on me, it smells like a spicy sweet tea. This is what I get from it. There is nothing dirty in here for my nose. I know some people say this one is dirty, extremely sexy, like animalic. I do find it quite sensual, but I don't find it dirty in any way. This is this is to me, like I was saying, this spicy tea. This is how it develops on me. Um, it smells very cozy. That's the thing. It's quite sweet, but not too much. It's a little bit spicy, but not too much. It's really nice. It stays on the skin for a long time for me. It really performs this one. It's really great for winter, for fall, but I don't mind wearing this like in other seasons. It's quite versatile. I like this about it. This is why made it to number five. Ooh la la, we made it to number four spot. And soon it will be top three. Whew. Number four spot is from Parfums de Marly. Yes, another one is the Lina. Yes, I know this is so hyped. I think almost everything in this top today is pretty hyped. Uh, but again, this for me, is one of those happy scents. I'll have to do a video about this, happy scents, uh, because I do have a bunch and I'm kind of like, I'm always like in the search for like new happy scents. This is a rose scent, obviously. It has lychee, it has rhubarb in it. It's quite bright, quite citrusy almost. I'm not even sure if this has citrus in it, but it kind of gives that vibe. This is one of those like, young roses for people who don't like rose so much. I mean, I don't like the typical rose that much. I usually like a rose with something extra, like a spiciness, like a certain brightness to it. Not just a rose, not just a boring rose. This is not a boring rose. This is like, I was saying, an uplifting rose, like a young rose. This is quite clean. And I think, I think it has certain sexiness to it. I think this has musk in it. I think that musk creates this, I don't know, th there is a clean sexiness in here, like uh, this is the perfect scent for a bride, as you know, many say, and I did say it myself, and I, I, I stand by it. This is like, it has something that just, I don't know, makes it really, really sexy, but in an innocent way. This next scent is the reason why I keep blind buying, because finding gems like this one, they're worth the trouble, the risk. Well, you know what I'm saying. So this one, number three, because yes, we made it to number three, comes from the house of Nishane and is Oolong Cha. Another uplifting scent, another like something bright. So what's in here is bright, makes your day bright, everyone's happy. <laughs> this is perfect for summer. This is better than orange sanguine because it performs better. And the scent is really amazing as well. This is tea, citruses and just a little bit of fig. This is not a fig fragrance, so mainly you get tea and citruses with it. And the people that smelled it, so I did spray it on a bunch of people, and everyone's reaction was pretty much the same, and they kind of did like, smelling it and then like, wow. Like their eyes went bigger and they said, wow. This is extremely likable, extremely, like inoffensive, yet strong and, and beautiful. So yes, I truly recommend this one for summer. Number two, describe the undescribable. Yes, it's Baccarat Rouge, the extra this time. This one, why is it only number two? Because you know how much I like this one. Well, it's number two because I'm a little bit tired of how much I smell it around me. I'll give you that. It's, it's a bit too much. It's a bit too much. The scent obviously is not guilty of it. <laughs> it's beautiful. That's why it's attracting so many people and so many absolutely love it. 
So this is cotton candy at its best. This is fluffy, airy, beautiful. It's, yeah, it's really beautiful. But this DNA is just everywhere. Of course, it had, this had to be in my top because I do wear this. I want to keep this. I, I really like it. I really, really like it. I don't reach for it as much as I used to. I was obsessed with it. I'm not so obsessed with it right now. Truth is, I have many new fragrances, but this, this has to be in my top. Otherwise, I don't know, this top would be a lie and we don't want that, do we? So yes, number two, Baccarat Rouge. Is this the best vanilla in town? Is it? I think it is. I'm talking about number one, of course, Annie by Nishane. This is unusual enough to be here as number one, but not too unusual. This is quite mass appealing and I hope it will not become as mass appealing as Baccarat Rouge because then we have a problem. This is about vanilla, a lot of vanilla, the best kind, about citruses, about some spices. It has ginger in the opening. It's quite sparkly and, and even though it's really sweet, it also has a freshness to it as well. So this, this, when it comes to performance, this smells with the cap on. Okay, this is an extra de parfum. This does perform really, really well. Probably one of the best, if not the best, in this top, really. This is a beast, although it looks friendly, right? This is so juicy. It's so beautiful. If you love vanilla, I do love vanilla, so that's why I own this one, because I truly love vanilla and I'm looking for the best vanilla out there. If you love vanilla, if you love your gourmands, try this one. It's worth trying. And like I was saying, it's not cloying. It has a certain greenness to it. And, and uh, the citruses tend to, to make this very, very likable, very friendly, let's say. And I do wear this in the summer as well. Although many people might think this is too much for the summer. I do. You don't need a lot of sprays with this one. It does like project and everything. So yes, number one. Ani. This was my top for today. This was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please let me know what are your favorite scents, what you would like to keep forever, if possible. Uh, let's say not 10, because maybe you don't have the patience to put 10 fragrances in the comments, but let's say at least three. Uh, give me your top three scents, you know, for let's say for life, although this video is not top 10 for life, but close enough. Uh, thank you for watching me. And I will see you next time. Bye.